This video describes the release of the superficial perineal nerve in a patient who has significant neuropathic pain following multiple knee operations. You can see from the marks I'm going to not only release the superficial perineal nerve, but also the common perineal nerve at the knee. The marks are made by measuring from the lateral malleolus at 10, 15, and 20 centimeters, proximal from that lateral malleolus, 3.5, 4, and 4.5. Sometimes it's not quite that lateral depending on the size of the leg, but that is good marking information to know to get going on this procedure, especially as you learn the procedure. This problem of decompressing the superficial perineal nerve and the common perineal nerve for pain after multiple knee operations, I think is very much underestimated. We use the hierarchy scratch collapse test to help in confirming entrapment at these uh, levels. But you could imagine that with the tortuous course of the perineal nerve and the entrapment point at the knee and then and the superficial perineal nerve in the leg, that this can be a, a source of pain for patients after multiple knee procedures. The distal end of that compression point on the superficial perineal nerve is the transverse crural septum, and that's the point where the nerve moves from deep under the fascia to superficial into the sub-Q. That's the area where the nerve will start to divide and you want to be very careful at that level that you don't cut one of the very, very tiny distal branches that are always there as the nerve moves out from underneath the fascia, just distal to that lateral curl septum into the subcutaneous tissue. The little vessel that you can see just above where my scissors are helps to mark where the J branch comes off. It turns back just like that, that's the nerve. So be careful that if you're gonna buzz that vessel, and there's another little distal branch, but if you're gonna buzz that vessel, make sure you don't buzz that nerve as well. And as you're coming distally to release, make sure you don't cut into it. You don't want to take a nerve compression and turn it into a neuroma. Even a small neuroma on one of those little branches there, not a good idea for patients with neuropathic pain to begin with. And that little tiny vessel will mark where that nerve is. Now, this is a slow down part of the surgery. Just because you'd want to decompress the nerve, not nick it. Initially, I'll show you what I did initially when I was learning this operation. I would go right for that yellow streak, the fat streak. Nerves like fat, and I would think incorrectly, oh, I'll find the superficial perineal nerve in this fat. Well, you won't, but you can open up that fat streak because you do want to do a longitudinal anterior and lateral fasciotomy. But when you see that fat, then move laterally, and you'll find the nerve embedded in the fascia, and you'll see a color differentiation between the fascia over the muscle on either side and the superficial perineal nerve. Now, in this case, you can almost see the nerve through that fascia, but in other patients, that fascial band will be thicker and you won't see the nerve until you're actually decompressing the nerve. So you have to go very slowly in here. And then I'm always looking for little branches coming off the, the nerve. When I release the superficial perineal nerve, I try to do that release off of, not directly on top of the nerve. Just like when I'm doing a carpal tunnel release, I like to release the carpal ligament on the ulnar side away from the median nerve, not releasing the carpal ligament right on top of the median nerve. So I'm coming up here, checking that's not a branch. Good, so I can buzz that. It's going transversely, so it doesn't look like a branch, but just be slow and careful. And not infrequently, you'll sec see a second uh, branch coming off the superficial perineal nerve laterally, and you want to uh, be heads up looking for that. And if you see it, you'll follow it distally, it will go through its own separate tunnel frequently as well. So I'm cutting this fascia to decompress the superficial perineal nerve, but also I'm doing a 
longitudinal fasciotomy in the uh, muscle compartments so that the muscle is nice and loose and is not going to in any way compress that superficial perineal nerve. I'll do a longitudinal but also a transverse fasciotomy and you'll see this in a short time. I'm using these uh, tenotomy scissors. Have these specially made. They are blunt. They're very dull and smooth on the outside of the scissors so that I'm not going to injure the nerve when I'm decompressing it. Now I can run my finger and I can feel this superficial perineal nerve going deep and those down curve retractors help me to protect the nerve. And you can see here I'm 20 centimeters proximal to the lateral malleolus and this will vary uh, from patient to patient, but those uh, marks of uh, between 15, 10, and 20 centimeters proximal to the malleolus get you a good start. Now see that thickened fascia there? Got to make sure there's no nerve in there. So you can cut initially longitudinally in the direction of where you might see a nerve, and then you can do your transverse cuts. And when I do that transverse incision in that fascia, you can see how the fascia jumps apart. It's sort of reminiscent of doing the internal neurolysis on a revision median nerve in the carpal tunnel where you do a longitudinal and transverse epineurotomy. You want to open up that tight fascia in that uh, lower extremity. It's quite possible that in these patients with multiple knee procedures, edema and swelling, immobilization, that there is a component of chronic compartment syndrome as well. So dynamic chronic compartment syndrome. So doing this fasciotomy is a, an excellent idea. Do it longitudinally and transversely in both muscle compartments. You can see I'm leaving the distal decompression to the end. And I am going very slowly here making sure that I'm looking for any little tiny branches coming off that superficial perineal nerve. There's always a J branch. You can see it coming up where it's coming back on itself. There's that little blood vessel near it. Frequently, when you get to the lateral curl septum and divide it, you can see an actual dent or color change in the superficial perineal nerve below. This fascia is very thin, but very strong. You can put the freer below it and you can see how strong that fascia is. I can lift the, almost lift the leg off the table with it. So you want to make sure you follow that superficial perineal nerve until you see that transverse curl septum. And now very carefully look for those small little branches. You can see that twist on that J branch distally. I want to neuralize that branch a little bit looser. I can buzz that little vessel now that I have it separated from the nerve. But I want to neuralize that little J branch proximally a bit. So instead of taking that abrupt twist, it's a little more gentle turn and not tethering in any way that superficial perineal nerve. This procedure is done under tourniquet. I'll put marcaine in the incision and a pain pump. The surgery to release the superficial perineal nerve is done for the most part to help pain, improve numbness, but also really to help pain. So these patients are ideal candidates for a pain pump and some marcaine in the incision. The postoperative closure for most patients is just subcuticular, interrupted dermal, and then subcuticular absorbable monocryl closure. For some patients that are diabetic or, or obese, I'll put some interrupted nylons in as well. And there you can see the final release, and importantly, those tiny little distal branches that you want to protect. Feeling finally proximally a little bit. And you can see proximally, I've also completed the common perineal nerve release, which is on a second video that Andrew's um, 
prepared. Patients are just dressed with a soft dressing with an ACE wrap and allowed immobilize, mobilization per their comfort. And another little bit of a transverse uh, release at that level as well. Compression of the superficial perineal nerve is probably much more common than is recognized. And it's a good operation to consider in patients that have pain in the lateral aspect of the leg, abnormal sensation on the dorsum of the foot, and especially if they have provocative findings of a tenel at that transverse curl septum or positive scratch collapse test. And I think you can uh, see that that nerve is well released.